In this lesson, we will be looking at adsorption, adsorption reactions, and how to add adsorption to a problem. So, as we have done in earlier lessons, we will work with a very simple example. And in this case, let's assume that we have copper dissolved into a sodium chloride solution. And then what we will do is to add a particle surface into this solution and we'll see how that affects uh, the copper distribution between the solid and the solid phases. So to start with, we can assume that we have a pH in this uh, uh, salt solution that has a, well, it is a pH 5. So we define pH fixed at and then 5. And then we assume that we have sodium and chloride in one millimolar concentrations each. So we change the concentration unit to millimolar. And then we have sodium ions, Na plus 1. And then we have a 1 millimolar liter of sodium ions. We add it to the list. And then we have the chloride ions. And we find that as well. Chloride, 1 millimolar, and add to list. And then we also assume that we have copper. Uh, we have 1 milligrams per liter of copper. So we change the concentration unit here to milligrams per liter before adding the copper. And then we find copper here. There are two different forms of copper, uh, but we have copper two that is uh, the most common form of copper uh, under normal conditions. So we have one milligrams per liter and then we add it to the list. And then when we uh, look at this list, we have sodium, chloride and copper. And now everything here is in milligrams per liter. Okay, now the question is, uh, what, how, how should, can we then add an adsorbing surface to the problem? Uh, we have the adsorption menu here. Uh, when we click on that, we can see that um, there are two different uh, options here. Surface complexation reactions, uh, that is what we will work with most of this lesson. And then we have adsorption isotherms. Uh, actually, the isotherm part here is not particularly developed in MinTech. And I usually don't use it myself. I find it easier actually to work with uh, spreadsheet programs such as Excel for calculating adsorption isotherms. So uh, it's basically surface complexation reactions that uh, you work with in MinTech. Uh, or you can also add uh, uh, adsorption reactions, complexation reactions on solid phase organic matter. And that uh, those kinds of reactions you add from down here. And uh, that is the last part of the lesson. We'll see how we do that. But we start with uh, surface complexation reactions. So if we click here, uh, we get into this sort of empty menu uh, where we first need to specify the number of surfaces. So we can have several different surfaces present at the same time. Uh, and uh, in this case, we just take one at a time. So we take one surface. And, and normally, I mean, I mean, I have never myself used more than two surfaces in a problem. I mean, it's, that's rather uncommon that you need to define more than two. And uh, uh, if you get if you add too many surfaces, the problem gets quite complicated and it can be tricky for Mintic to solve it. So keep try to keep the number of surfaces down to one or two. That's my advice. Okay, so we have a adsorption model that we need to select. Now, if, uh, if you click here, most of these are surface complexation models, true surface complexation models. The first group here is when we use, uh, we only define the interface model, uh, but then we need to supply all the parameters ourselves. And in the lower part, we have uh, uh, different param parameterized surface complexation models. But we will start with the simplest one of all, and that is a fixed charge site. Because what that is, is simply an ion exchange site that we define. And when we choose this uh, option, it is actually the Gaines-Thomas ion exchange equation that we use. Um, so we change, add this option, and then the only thing we need to do here is to provide a concentration of this uh, fixed charge site. And this is then actually negative charges most of the time, although we can 
choose here if it's negative or positive, but usually then it's negative if we work with soils, for example, and clay minerals. So if we have, let's suppose that we have um, uh, 0 0.1 millimoles per liter of this fixed charge. Uh, so we add that to this box and then you don't need to do anything more. Uh, it's important to have this box ticked, the counter ion accumulation, because otherwise you won't get any ion exchange at all. Um, then we have a database here uh, that uh, defines these reactions for every single um, cation or anion that can be present in, this, in the water. Um, or in the suspension, I should say, because I mean, when we add this side, it means that we have some clay mineral or whatever that is present in, in the water. Um, to start with, in, in this default database, uh, we can see that we have a selectivity coefficient of the Gaines Thomas equation that is unity equal to one. So we have no selectivity, and that is true for all of these different cations that we have in the database. So if you want to have some selectivity, you need to change this number. But if we are happy with everything, we need no need to do anything here. We can just click save and back to main menu. And then we can run the problem. And then we get uh, the results here. And to get an overview, we can click uh, equilibrated mass distribution. And we can see that, uh, well, around 96% of all the copper that we defined is actually bound now to this uh, surface uh, uh, and 3.8% remain dissolved. So that means that out of the one milligrams per liter that we have in this suspension, 96% is sold and 3.8% is sold. Now, sometimes you might want to change. So instead of uh, distributing this one milligrams per liter on uh, both uh, the dissolved phase and the solid phase, you want to fix the dissolved concentration at this one milligrams per liter instead. And you can do that if you go back to the main menu and look at the component list now, uh, because as soon as we have defined a, an, an adsorption reaction, we have this total dissolved boxes popping up, popping up. And we could actually tick the box for copper which means that we will actually fix the dissolved concentrations at this number, one milligrams per liter, and then the program will essentially calculate how much copper is bound on the surface instead. So if we do that, we run MinTech, uh, we look at the equilibrated mass distribution, and now the copper concentration that we see here is, is, is one milligrams per liter. In fact, it's just that it's been recalculated to, to uh, mole per liter. And then we see that under these conditions, 71% of the copper is sold. Okay, we go back and we uh, get rid of this uh, totally sold option. So we have the total concentration in a suspension defined here now. And we look at another model. So now we looked at how this ion exchange model works, the Gaines-Thomas equation. We could, instead of this uh, Gaines-Thomas equation, maybe uh, we can instead uh, use one of these parameterized um, adsorption reactions. Uh, this one, HFO, Sombach and Morel. These are reactions for HFO is hydrospheric oxide, which is the same as ferrihydrite. And this is a, quite an old database. Uh, Sombach and Morel wrote the book in 1990. And most of the constants in this database are from that book although it has been extended with some additional constants since then. So if you click here, um, this is quite a simple uh, surface complexation model. Uh, and as I said, it's rather old, but it's still used a lot because the database is extensive. It contains a lot of different uh, entries for the different elements. Uh, the only thing you need to do here is to change the solid concentration, which is the concentration of this iron oxide uh, per liter of water. So gram of iron oxide per liter of water, that is what this means. So let's, let's assume that we have 0 0.05, something like that, milligrams per liter of uh, this uh, uh, hydrospheric oxide. That's actually all we need to do on this menu to, to get this uh, working. Uh, you can also see that here you have a complexation database connected, 
which contains all the complexation constants of the Sombach and Morel model. And we can click that and here we have rather this extensive database that I was talking about. I'm not going into details about that now, but here you find all these constants and how they are defined. We quit. Um, here you can get uh, have different uh, options now, now because we have uh, previously we had the fixed iron the fixed charge site it is still maintain this counter ion accumulation but normally when we run uh, this um, uh, model we keep this unticked uh, because uh, usually uh, there isn't a lot of counter ion accumulation on two ion oxides so the result will not differ that much um, here is another option uh, which involves sort of a more precise calculation uh, where you don't make as many assumptions. Uh, you can see the details if you click here. And, and this is more computationally demanding but it's supposed to give more correct results in certain conditions. But normally you keep these boxes unticked. Uh, and you can see that, as I said, the only thing you need to do is to add the solid concentration. You can't do anything else. The surface area is fixed according to Zombach and Morel's parameterization. And then you have two different sides on the iron oxide. And the, these uh, relationships here are also fixed. But you can actually change these settings in uh, the default settings of the program uh, if, you're re if you're not happy with, with any of these. Okay, so let's get back. Uh, to uh, the main menu and then we can run this program now but with this uh, adsorption to iron oxide defined and you can see now on the main menu you get a lot of different um, uh, species that look a bit strange uh, and you see this equal to sign sign before i and this means that this we have uh, iron oxide groups here iron is um, connected to other ions and oxygens in a, in a mineral matrix. Uh, and then you have a number of different so-called surface complexes and other surface species here. Again, to get an overview of the results, you can click equilibrated mass distribution. And then you see that under these conditions, 11.8% of the copper is sold onto this ion oxide. Um, okay, uh, so that's, in, and of course, as usual, you can uh, print all these results to Excel if you want to. So we get back to the uh, input menu. Uh, so we looked at uh, these different uh, models. You see that there are some other uh, particles uh, defined. You have a database for hydrous manganese oxide by Tonking et al. here. You have a Guthite for Gibbsite. Uh, and um, then we have models for uh, one more for ferrihydrite and we have two models for calcite. Uh, it de depends on the model how extensive they are. Uh, and it also they have different interface models. Some of them have the diffuse mo lay model as uh, the Sombach and Morel model, which is quite simple. Other ones as like this uh, CDM, the CD music model for ferrihydrite has additional parameters that are normally fixed. For example, these capacitances. But according to this parameterization, they are fixed, so you don't need to change them. Okay, so we get out of here. Uh, okay, now we haven't got anything defined any longer, but that's okay. Oh, we can add one surface again, just to see these models up here. So these are uh, unparameterized models that relies on a certain interface model. So for example we have the diffuse layer model here. And if you use the diffuse layer model you can then define the surface area, the site density and a number of other things yourself uh, and then you need then to provide your own uh, equilibrium constants. There is a stub here of a database but it does only contain um, a surface acid base reactions and nothing else and you might want to change these log k values and so on so so these are not models that you can use uh, at once you need you need to provide reactions and parameters to them to make them work more details you'll find them in 
the help file and in the user manual. I won't go through more about that now. Okay, so that was how to add absorption reactions for um, uh, particles such as clay minerals and oxides where they have surface complexes. You might also have absorption reactions going on to organic matter, solid phase organic matter. And what you do then is to uh, add sort of a version of these organic complexation models that we looked before in an earlier lesson. Uh, but then we only looked at the dissolved uh, phase uh, when we added DOC. Uh, but uh, many, a lot of this organic matter, especially in soils, also in sediments, is uh, present in a solid phase. Uh, and then you need to use this option, add SOM, which, uh, where S is for solid phase organic matter. So then if we click that, you have the choice between these two different models, SHM and Ikadonon. They work basically the same. Uh, we can just look at the SHM alternative here. Uh, we uh, then uh, need to click this edit SOM parameters because here uh, we have to supply at least three different things. One is the, what is the DOC concentration in our suspension that we try to model. So we need some estimate of that. Let's assume that we have one milligram per liter of DOC. Then the tricky part here is also to be able to estimate what is in the solid phase. How much fulvic acid do we have and how much humic acid? Uh, and this is of course uh, uh, tricky. Uh, you need to consult different uh, scientific papers and the principles for how to do that there. And again, it's nothing I will go through in detail. I haven't got time for that on these lessons. But just for illustrations, we, we can assume that we have 0.1 grams per liter of fulvic acid and 0.3 grams per liter of humic acid in, the, in this uh, uh, organic matter that we have now, we, we should, which the water is now in contact with. So we can imagine, for example, that we have something like peat that is dissolved into some water or rather suspended. Uh, okay, and then connected to this, we have databases. So this is a SHM model, the Stockholm Humic model, and it has its databases uh, with a number of equilibrium constants. And if you look at the uh, help file, you can, you can see from where these equilibrium constants and so on has, have been taken. Okay, uh, we also uh, assume that we have counter ion accumulation because a lot, a large part of the ions that bind to organic matter is actually only weakly bound uh, uh, electrostatically and therefore we need to add this counter ion accumulation. So we can click save and back to main menu and then basically we can run the problem and we get some results and a lot of different species over here and to get the uh, sort of um, picture, overall picture you click here on the equilibrate mass distribution and you see that, okay, under these conditions, 99.8% of copper was bound. So that's quite a lot. So uh, uh, this organic matter was quite efficient um, uh, under these conditions. But of course, you might argue that, okay, it's not very realistic that you have a system composing of, let's say, peat and just a solution of copper. Uh, because it means that there's nothing else there that can, can compete with the copper ions. And normally you have things like aluminium and calcium present in large amounts. And just to take an example of what that means, we can assume that in this system you have aluminium, sufficient aluminium, so you have equilibrium with aluminium hydroxide. So we can add that. So we, let's assume that we have equilibrium with aluminium hydroxide. We specify aluminium from here. We add the first, again, the first uh, number uh, letters of aluminium hydroxide, which is uh, ALOH. And then we usually use the soil of aluminium hydroxide. We accept these settings here. We click add to the problem. And then we go back and run again. And uh, OK, uh, where do we see the result? Well, we see that here, equilibrate mass distribution and you can see now that, uh, okay, it was uh, still a very large proportion of the copper 
that was about 99.2%. Uh, that was a lot. So under these conditions, the aluminium mines didn't really was not really able to uh, uh, compete with the copper. We can compare again what happens. We had 99.2% uh, now when we had uh, uh, equilibrium with aluminium hydroxide. And when we didn't, if we go to the fixed species, we delete this one uh, and run, we run again without aluminium. We have 99.8%. So basically we went from 99.8% soared to 99.2% when we had aluminium. It might not seem a great deal, but the importance is here that we add, we change the dissolved concentration quite a lot actually by doing that. So if we focus on the dissolved part instead, the competition with aluminium had a lot of influence. Okay, but that was uh, some sort of key aspects of how to use these different adsorption um, options. And uh, that's all for this lesson. Thank you for your attention.